My name is Nick Martin. Um, I work in commercial construction as a project manager uh, and do a lot of fishing on the side. I used to work up in the Northern Territory, doing barra guiding and the like, and then moved back down to Sydney and I worked uh, at Fish About for a while and then helped Vic set up Ocean Hunter Sports Fishing. So I worked with Vic for probably the best part of eight years. And then he's now moved up to Southwest Rocks, so we bought a new eating craft to keep ourselves entertained. So like Sydney's sort of got, it's got two distinct seasons and then kind of like a transition period. Like at the moment, we're sort of in that transition period. Typically you get most of your kingfish in close during summer and then they'll sort of transition and move offshore in winter. This year it hasn't really happened because the water's still quite warm. So we're in, still in quite kind of a, you know, an awkward period where there's some fish offshore, some fish inshore, but nothing's really that consistent. Yeah, drop, may as well. Um, yeah, so we're at the 12 mile. Um, fish this place a lot, typically in the winter months, sort of starts fishing well, I don't know, anywhere from late May, and you can actually catch kings here the whole year. A lot of people stop fishing it over summer, but they're, they're still here. Um, look, it, it, it often gets super crowded, especially with, when there's heaps of um, fish on the reef, but in terms of what we're doing today, it's sort of a combination of deep water live baiting and jigging. Obviously, it's a bit rough today, but we'll mix it up. So we'll go yakas and slimies, lots of knife jigs. We'll see if we can make it happen. Probably top tip would be go with people who know what they're doing. So spend the money as opposed to buying a boat. Go out with Matt Reed or Stu or, you know, there's a bunch of good operators off Sydney and you basically pay to get taught and that will accelerate your learning curve massively. In terms of fishing off Sydney, bait's key. Um, so live bait or fresh bait is very important. You know, top couple of baits would be squid. If you're fishing in inshore garfish as well, it's fantastic. Uh, Slimies are always a hit, and then you sort of transition down to, you know, yuccas and other, you know, everything else. I was fishing a 120 pound leader. Uh, we typically crimp everything. We crimp everything because in Sydney, you don't know if the, kit, the, the next kingfish is gonna be sort of 60 centimeters or a meter 30, like they range wildly. 70 Gamagatsu live baits, twin hook rig. Uh, as I mentioned, everything was, was crimped up to a Gamagatsu swivel, 37 kilo swivel, with about, so from the top of the swivel, about four foot of leader to an FG knot, and then running like 80, 80 pound braid. I get asked all the time by people, you know, what gear should we buy? And you would have seen on my boat, all my kingfish gear is, it's quite piecemeal. You've got different Stellas of different vintages, different Saltigas of different vintages, but my sort of, Thoughts are literally if you if you buy the best on the market, you never have to upgrade it, and I firmly believe that. So like the majority of the Stellas on that boat, they've been you know they get serviced every couple of years, but I've had them for you know 10, 12, 14 years, and you just can't break them. Sitting behind me is a beautiful Eden Craft 565. Uh, so I actually ordered it during COVID. I'd never been on one, but. Fished a lot. On one, one of our mates, Adam's got a he's got a six meter offshore down at JB. So we've done a fair bit of tuna fishing on that. Absolutely love it. So at the time, uh, that was that was when you guys released your you know Captain Mag feature on the 565. So read all about it and watched the video, and actually ordered it sight unseen. I'd never been on one, so I took your word. <laughs> For a little boat, you know it's it's six meters. Um, it packs a massive punch. It's got the big big bow flare. When you trim it down, it's it's super comfortable, and we fish in you know not terrific weather, but on average it's pretty shitty out of Sydney, so pretty normal to be fishing you know kind of 15, 20 knots of wind as it was today. So you sort of need something like that. Probably favourite feature would be, would be the hull, and it, you feel incredibly safe as well. It's quite stable at rest, and it's got really high gunnels, which I like as well because you kind of you, you know you can lock yourself in. So yeah, they've done a fantastic job. So Eden Craft have modified the light bait tanks. So they're now deeper, they've got rounded edges. We'll have, you know, a bunch of big slimies swimming in there happily all day. So it's obviously made a huge difference. I think the other, other difference between the boat you drove and this one is engine size. So this has got a 200 Suzuki on it. 
from feedback from other people, it sounds like they're more fuel efficient than everything else on the market at the moment. I mean, we did a pretty massive day today. We sort of went everywhere and I think we did about 70 litres, which is pretty good. And then like a, a big tuna day off Sydney, we'll do maybe 120 litres, 130 litres, which is pretty good for a boat fully loaded with people and, and fuel. I think personal preference, I think I'll, I'll end up putting Sea Deck on it. Apart from that, they've done an you know, excellent job. So it's all Raymarine and it's been fantastic. In terms of the setup, we've got the Raymarine Axiom Pro RVX 16. We've got the Axiom Pro 9. Uh, in terms of transducers, this was a bit, bit of a game changer for our fishing. So I've got the RV100, um, which is a three-in-one transducer. So that does your side scanning and your, you know, your 3D imagery and the rest of it. And then we've got a uh, B275 low high wide, which has been keel mounted. So also got the Raymarine autopilot in the boat. Uh, we've also got their chirp module as well, which is the CP470 chirp module. Uh, we've got the Raymarine radio as well, and then we've got um, a fusion stereo system. And as you've seen from today, uh, it's pretty powerful technology. Like we're marking the bottom, running sort of 25, 28 knots of marking bait. Yeah, so that's the, the nice thing about these sounders. Like a lot of the time, you literally stumble across bait, which is what we're doing, sort of running 25 knots. All right, one up, guys. You know, if you've got a good school of kings, you'd be able to count them like one, two, three, four, five, six, up to whatever number's actually there, which makes it easy. So like when we're fishing today at the 12, we're driving around and you asked me a few times, like, have we seen any kingfish yet? I didn't see a kingfish on the sounder, so that's, that's why we left. And then we went to the next spot and we found a bait ball and we marked kingfish straight away. When we're talking about game changing technology, what we sort of found with the marlin fishing is when you're live baiting with marlin, you're always trying to stay on the bait. Once you lose the bait, quite often it's taking you, you know, five, 10 minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it is to find the bait, to go back to it. The big difference with this side scanning and also their 3D technology is you know where the bait is the whole time. So you stay on the fish, so you keep yourself in the zone and you definitely get more bites. It is, it, is, it definitely is user friendly to get to a certain point, but to take it to the next level, it's, it's so incredibly powerful with what you can do. Like we're not even really pushing the boundaries at all. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, so you've got both options with the Raymarine stuff. You can either use all the knobs and buttons or it's touchscreen as well, um, which is very user friendly and sort of you can, it works in all conditions as well. Fishing for me, like I do a lot of hunting as well. Fishing's a form of hunting. So I really enjoy that sort of side of it. You know, actually figuring out how to catch a fish. The actual catching bit's sort of the tra transaction bit. It's kind of that sense of relief or reward when you actually hook that fish, like today. That was part of the point in buying this boat. Like, I'm obviously more time poor now with work and family and the rest of it, but just to have a boat sitting there ready to capitalise on those good days.